You reckon India are worried now? They've dropped their opening game. Yes, I know you've got to keep winning games, but you, you drop two games in your group stages, you're in big trouble. I, I think India will be content. Uh, uh, the interesting problem they have is with their uh, sixth bowler because Hardik Pan is not bowling now. Will they start to doubt what's been successful from a long period of time? Do they have to bring an all-rounder in to cover for that sixth bowling option? So they've got to, um, some decisions to make. What about Pakistan? We've often seen them over many, many years. They're up and down, up and down. Are they a genuine chance of winning the World Cup now? Absolutely. I, I, I thought, I said last night that I reckon that India will blow them away, but far out. You know, just, just their quality, that they bowl beautifully. They've got some good fast bowlers, the Pakistani players, and the way they batter their top order. I mean, they obviously did not lose a wicket, so, yeah. Clinical win. I, I thought Shaheen Shah Afridi, the, the left arm, the big tall left arm, that was Wasim Abkarin, like, wasn't it? Yeah, he's aggressive up front. That's what you want. You want in your first mm. six overs, you've got to look to take wickets. But it'll be interesting to see how they back up from this. Pakistan is traditionally an emotional team. Whether they come, can come back up after the high of this match. I think they can because they've got a wonderful coach. I think with Matthew <laughs> Hayden <laughs> at the top there. But look, some of those balls, you, you know, you mentioned Hads. And BJ, yep. that's good pace. He's tall, he shapes the ball back in. And the celebration, you're welcome. That's fantastic. Well, well, and the thing I loved about it too was that they didn't leave anything in the tank. They weren't nervous. They didn't seem nervous. They, they were aggressive and they went after it. And, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to win that power play. And that's what they did. They were aggressive in the power play. They had Virat Kohli, they went after him. Rohit Sharma, mm. he was out. Too good, bold, on your way. It was the aggression that they showed and how calm they were when the game was under pressure. What about Kale Rahul? I mean, had a wonderful IPL and got knocked over mm. last night. I mean, just well, beaten by pace. Mate, you're spot on. But I thought Mohamed Rizwan, there, 831 runs prior to this. He's been the most runs scorer, basically, uh, for Pakistan and, and in the world and turned it around last night. Unbelievable. Yeah. And Baba Azam was unbelievable. And these two guys, as you say, had, uh, have been prolific in the last 12 months. Yeah, I think what Rizwan does is he compliments Baba. He, he can go hard. Bubba, we know, is a classical battery. He plays really pretty cricket shots, but Rizza, he goes after the ball and allows Bubba to get into his innings. And this was just clinical. He was really, really clinical under a lot of pressure in the first game. Yeah, we talk about celebration. We talk about the rivalry with these two teams. It probably doesn't get any bigger in world cricket. As you said, over a billion people watching. But the rivalry between these two countries, I mean, I know politically it's very, very yeah. sensitive, but it's there, isn't it? It's like an Ashes thing for us, but ten times bigger. Oh, a million times bigger. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Ashes will be the biggest this year. But look, have a look at the celebrations here. What I did enjoy, though, was the, the sportsmanship on the field. And I guess the fans, there were a lot of fans out there, India and also Pakistani fans, they were going crazy. But the Indians, I think, appreciated a good game of cricket. All right, uh, let's find out what uh, Virat Kohli had to say all about it, being the Indian captain. Here he is now at the press conference. They definitely outplayed us. There is no doubt about that. Um, you don't win by 10 wickets if you don't play, outplay the opposition. We did not even get any chances. I mean, they were very professional. And look, they, you definitely have to give them credit. We tried our best. Um, we tried to create enough pressure on them, but they had the answers. And there is no shame in accepting that a team played better than you. Um, and as, as I said, when you step onto the field as, as 11 players from either side, you have an equal opportunity to win the game. And there's no guarantees that you're going to go out there and win every match. Um, but having said that, you also don't go out there being casual, right? So we tried our best. We, we made a decent total out of our situation, we thought. And we thought we could put them under pressure. But they did not let us come into the game at any stage. And they definitely deserve the credit for uh, finishing off the game very strongly and not allowing, allowing us to put any pressure on them through the innings. Yeah, I like Vera Cole. I think he's a very humble captain. I love the way that he embraced Barbara Azam after the game as well. 57 from 49. Look, he's always under pressure, even if he's batting well, but 57 from 49, he gave them a shake, but not good enough. He put a lot of pressure on the Pakistani bowlers, but yeah, he wasn't good enough on that particular. He just had no one else around him that could actually build a partnership. Kohli is a, he's a fighter. Uh, if, if there's someone that wants to take it to the Pakistani attack, it'll be Virat Kohli. Hasn't been in terrific form of recent time, but still world class, and he proved that again last night. I don't think India will be too worried. I think, he, he, listen to that press conference there. He's basically just said, we're, we're beaten by a better team. That happens. Uh, it's first game in the tournament. They, they play 2020 cricket as well as anyone in the world. So that, as a classy response there, uh, I, I don't think India will worry too much about it. All right, we've got a very special person we're going to catch up with at the moment. And he is the inside the Pakistan and he is the Pakistan batting coach. 
And it is a very good afternoon to Matthew Hayden. Hey, Doss, uh, I just want to double check it, mate. Are you the guru now? Oh, definitely. <laughs> you, you, want me to, you want me to sit in some sort of yoga pose? And <laughs> well, pretend, mate, whatever you did, be... hey, mate, whatever you did, it worked, didn't it? What a magnificent win for your boys last night. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, we often talk in, in sporting terms in Australia of, of our holy grails and come to mention, you know, Sheffield Shields over the years. You've got your grand finals, obviously, every year, State of Origin. Um, but when it truly comes to sport and the battle of sport and the elevation of cricket in community in India and Pakistan, literally cricket is a religion. So this becomes the holy grail of, <laughs> of the sporting calendar, literally. Um, I, I just couldn't believe. I mean, we again, we talk about ashes, right? Like being yeah. such a big part of our, our of our cricket calendar. And this year is going to be fantastic. But you know, sitting inside that change room in Dubai, and, and bear in mind, fellas, I've been in, in there for you know almost five weeks now. Yeah. I have seen nothing like I saw last night. The scenes were phenomenal. There was just such passion and such commitment. I mean, the usual suspects of patting the dog and, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and turning the light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> it was just fantastic, though. Like, and all of that was just taken inside the stadium. You could see the boys there getting off the bus. Um, some birthday celebrations for one of the, the fielding coaches, and they were magnificent in the field last night as well. Um, but I guess one of the things that those pitches don't show um, there's a lot of euphoria and, and, and stardom outside the change room. Inside the change room, I've never seen a more disciplined and more humble approach to winning. I, I thought, you know, as from an outsider's perspective, that there would be all of that stuff that you just saw that came inside the changing room, and it just wasn't the case. There was such great humility, you know, such a, a brilliant sense of, you know what, it was written that it was going to be our day-to-day, -day, but please and respectfully may remain humble um, as we look towards New Zealand. So that part of it for mine was was just really special. Uh, they look they look coachable players, Haydosh. You look like you've got a really good leader, leader in, in um, Azzy, yeah. uh, um, Bubba Azzy. But they look coachable. Yeah. look like they set their own standards. They want to put the world mm. on show that we are a cricket nation. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. And you've done a lot of coaching, Hats, you know, over the years, much, much more than me. Um, there is a there is this great respect for the game of cricket, um, and so I guess from my point of view, I, I went in very softly um, and waited for players to start requesting you know certain things. Mindsets often has been the, the major discussion um, because really, what can I do about technique in, in such a short time? You don't want to be tinkering with technique, but you can be certainly tinkering around mindset. Um, and you're right, very coachable. There's never been an answer uh, back to me that's kind of suggested that, you know, coach, you've had your go. Um, sorry, but, you know, we're thinking this. And, and I think that word coachable is something which is really significant because we also have a, quite a diverse uh, age group of players. We've, we've got guys that I've played against, you know, Salim and you guys definitely have, Salim Malik. Um, that's so show of Malik um, and also uh, Hafiz, you, you know, two guys that are well into their, into their forties. Um, and so those guys have got such fantastic input uh, into the group and rightfully said, Baba Azam is a really solid leader. He, he's, he's no fuss. He's, he's, he's not anxious about things. He, he goes into his performances. He requires humility and more than anything, boys, which you'll never see in Australian cricket, uh, dressing room. The whole culture is under uh, underpinned by uh, this fantastic sense of spirituality and spirit. I mean, every day, bar none, there is this unbelievable discipline. You can be walking to the lift, and there'll be prayer time. And at the base of the lift, there'll be there'll be all of the team uh, in unison praying. So it's a it's a phenomenal cultural experience for me personally. But to, to see the way that they engage with each other. Uh, to see the way they engage with their own sense of spirituality and purpose around their country is phenomenal.
Hey, Dos Binger, we all know that you love a, a team chat. What's it been like with the language barrier? I know you know a little bit of Hindi, spending a lot of time in India. What's your, what's your Urdu like? Have you, have you learned any words or have you been trying to interact with the, the teammates? Mate, like, like most Aussies, when we travel abroad, you often go to the dirty words first <laughs> and then you work your way... You, you work, you, you work your way you work backwards your way up. from there, right? The, yeah, the please, the thank yous become a priority after you've just sworn at someone. But, uh, yeah, look, there is a language barrier um, and, and it's worth acknowledging. And um, mm. there are some boys that are fantastic, you know, in terms of their, their capabilities around translation. So the other day I had a really good long chat to, to one of the young blokes that you may not have seen much of, but you will in the future, young Hader. Um, and he, he's got a language barrier, but... Hafiz translated um, that entire conversation and she speaks slowly, you're very, you know, precise in how it is that mm. you want to explain things and, and you get across. And, and look, oftentimes in cricket, it's because it's such a visual game, the words mean nothing. If you've got uh, a tip that you want to relay, body language and, and, and hand signals and temperament is part thereof of that challenge that bridges the gap between the words as such. But... You know, we all learnt the game, I, I sense, by just looking at the game, either looking at yourself or looking at others that you want to try to um, replicate and then you go from there. And, Binger, your name comes up a lot. I mean, this young group of fast bowlers, and we saw this last night, right? Shaheen Afridi. Shaheen, yeah. They, they have been facing 130 for the last month during the IPL, and we all bang on about how brilliant that is. It's a different cup of tea being when you're running in at your pace and it's mm. a different cup of tea when you're running in at Shaheen's pace. And to deliver those two balls, and they're the best two balls that I've seen in five weeks of cricket, a fast in-swinging Yorker, the, the courage that it takes firstly to, 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 to bowl that delivery and the pace and the execution with a new ball is admirable um, against Rohit Sharma. And, and then you get that unbelievable K.R. Rahul I don't think I've not seen him hit the middle of the bat in five weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Point. And then and then he gets that ball, right? And that's yeah. just like one, two punch combination. Mm. And India are now in the side, the power player are on the back foot. And then you've got young um, Harris Ralph, who's played out in the Big Bash League, that came from the humble beginnings of playing that tennis ball cricket. They play in Pakistan, never played hardball cricket. He got spotted, talent ID, and said, "Come with me, young fella." Suddenly now he's bowling 150s for his country. And, and talk, there is a, a string of, of young fast bowlers just like that, that are sitting in the wings that want to be Shoah Bakhtar, they want to be Brett Lee. They've got zero governors on their, on their accelerators. They want to bowl fast. And God love them because I tell you what, it's a next level when it comes to world, world T20s. Mm. When average bowling gets punished, and great bowling gets rewarded. Well, Pakistan always find a way to, to find fast bowlers, don't you? You mentioned Shoaib Akhtar, but talk us through the, the sort of celebrations last night. It's obviously two massive countries. There's a lot of rivalry. But one thing I loved last night, Hados, was you see mm. Virat Kohli and Baba, they're, they're embracing each other. That was a mm. very special moment to show that, that sportsmanship in cricket. Yeah, it's also... Agree, yeah, agree. It's, it's also the role of cricket too. Binger and, and I guess we've all been, you know, on the front line of that for, for quite a long time. I, I think you and me in particular, right, who have done pretty much every IPL in one way or another. Mm. You know, that role around around how fierce rivalry becomes central to a, a community and that community linked by ocean becomes cricket and how important that is to keep in the context of, of life in general and the importance of that um, as a whole. So... Yeah, beautiful scenes, and and that's our great game, right? Like it, it goes through various stages of controversy, whatever that is, or it goes through challenges, like it has done, you know, through our forefathers, you know, through the Great Depressions and wars and things like that. But central to the life of a third of the population of the world is this great game of cricket, and man, I, I feel so privileged to be a part of it. And just on that being, um, and this is you know a really sensitive point, but. Last night, the very first thing that I thought about in my head was Dean Jones. Mm. You know, he, his heart, Dino, has been so solid around Pakistani cricket for some time. And, and you know, I'm sure looking down from heaven, he would have been looking down last night and going, 
Yeah, that's my boys. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's well my said. boys, yeah. yeah. yeah well, he, he's put a lot of time and effort. Yeah, mate, well said. Um, mate, thanks for your time tonight. We could talk for hours, we know that. And, we'd, <laughs> mate, we'd love to see you taking on Australia. It could be a first semi-final up against JL, mate. So um, appreciate your time. Um, we wish yeah. you well, and we certainly do mean that, mate. And thanks for your time tonight. Yeah, my pleasure. No worries. On your legend. Yeah, well, Thanks, Hados.